Hello, everyone. So today we are going to discuss with uh, the next program. That is program number three of your NS2, of your computer network laboratory. That is your Ethernet LAN. The question is as follows. Implement an Ethernet LAN using N nodes and set multiple traffic nodes and plot congestion window set for different source and destination. So this is the uh, topology what we need to write. Uh, you need to create n nodes. Okay, as per uh, the question, we have created some six nodes, and they said you need to create different source and destination. So I'm creating two different sources. Okay, uh, for uh, n naught is your source one, and for your n naught source destination is your n five. For n two is your second source. For that destination is your n three. So here they said you need to create an Ethernet LAN. So before that, what do you mean by LAN? You know that local area network. So where multiple systems are interconnected each other within the same building, within the same lab are called as LAN. And here Ethernet is a protocol, okay, that is used to connect your devices either in your wired network or your wireless network, okay. So here Ethernet is your protocol, that's it. It's your connector for connecting your LANs. So here what they said is you need to plot your congestion window. So before proceeding, what I do is I'll create a particular LAN like this and your LAN consists of some five different nodes. That's your N0, N1, N2, N3, N4. And as uh, I want to create a multiple traffic node and want to plot the congestion window, I'm creating uh, N0 uh, as your source one and I'm making N2 as your source two. And here uh, in the same LAN, the source two and for your source two, the destination is your N3 node. But for your source one, the destination node is your N5 that doesn't present in your same LAN. It is present in your different LAN. And before proceeding, so what exactly uh, Ethernet uh, protocol uh, will do? So this Ethernet protocol, whatever it is there, it is present in your data link layer. It is present in your data link layer. And normally it is used for what under the data transmission within your LAN. Okay. And this particular Ethernet LAN, whatever it is, there, it is having two sub layers. One is your logical link layer. What is of your logical link layer? It is used to transfer the data, whatever the data that comes from outside the uh, network into your LAN to that particular thing, whatever the data transfer is done. The data transfer from outside network to your inside LAN will be taken care by your logical link layer. And there's one more sub layer called as MAC layer that is called as medium access control. This is also one of the sub layer, okay, in order to data transmission. And uh, the standard MAC layer for your Ethernet, what you're using is 802.3. The standard protocol, the standard Ethernet protocol you are using, uh, that is your MAC is what under 802.3 for which one are for your Ethernet LAN. And here, whenever you just say congestion control, okay, for which protocol uh, it's used, that is your TCP. So you all know that TCP is a reliable data transfer protocol which supports your congestion control as well as what you can say, which supports your congestion control as well as your flow control mechanism. So congestion control is something, but whenever congestion occurs, how we are going to avoid? So by just providing your congestion window at your sender end and receiver window at your receiver end. So this particular congestion window, whatever it is here, it's just a uh, variable. So that has been denoted as what you can say is CWND, CWND. So what does it do is that is going to limit the amount of data. Okay, it's going to limit the amount of data. So whenever you send the data before getting your acknowledgement, how many packets can be transmitted? So that will be specified by this particular congestion window. So as per this particular topology, whatever it is there, so we look at your program, how exactly it can be written. So let me go to my program here uh, with the same topology, whatever it is there. Okay, uh, I've already written that program. You all know that I can use your gedit or your vi editor. Okay, I'll use gedit. Okay, so three dot TCL. Okay, file with an extension called as TCL. Okay, so here what I do is, okay, as per the topology, the code is here. So first and foremost step, as we discussed in your previous step, create your simulator class with an operator called as new. And for this simulator class, you can create an object by using what set command. Object is what ns. And open two different files. One is your trace file, and one more thing is your name file. So trace file with an extension called as dot here. Open your write mode because once the result has been, uh, once the simulation has been executed, the result has to be copied to these files. Okay, create an object for this file called as something TF. 
and whatever you get in your simulation window, copy to which one you have this file. So for this file, what is the object TF? So trace all is a keyword. Okay, copy from your simulator class and copy to this particular file. For this file, object is what TF. That's it. In the same way, NAM file is created. And also, what I can do is uh, I can create your nodes. So how many nodes I'm creating? Is six nodes I've created. So just by using what node command in your simulator class and you can specify the user required uh, name for that particular uh, nodes by using a set command and also what you can do is during uh, uh, simulation execution you can see the color of your node and everything how to set that one so dollar and not color is a keyword like whatever the color is that enclosed within your double quotes something like blue as specified and n not i am going to take as what source node that's why go to that node which is that node dollar and not label source one enclosed within your double code same thing okay so i'm just going to create your n1 node i don't color nothing so n2 node i'll create i'll make it as red and uh, this one In the same way i'll create a uh, uh, multiple nodes whatever it is here. n0 n1 n2 n3 n4 and n5 so six nodes i've created so as per this particular diagram you can see uh i'm just creating a lan and that particular LAN consists of how many nodes here connected with how many nodes here? Five nodes. That is your N0 to N4. So to do that, uh, what I do is I go to my simulator class. That is your object is what? NS. So dollar NS. Make LAN is a keyword. So you're creating a LAN that consists of the nodes N0, N1, N2, N3, N4. So just enclosed within your double quotes, which all the nodes that been specified for your LAN. Okay. So make LAN is a keyword, which all the nodes is it that is been enclosed within what? Double quotes. And next is your bandwidth okay next is your time delay and next is your logical link layer as i said it is used to transmit the data from outside network to your inside network inside your lan and the type of queue queue is your main class the type of the queue what you're using is drop tail so you're just specifying that's it instead of just specifying drop tail the type of queue you're using is what drop tail and i said that for your ethernet lan the standard mac protocol is what mac the standard mac protocol is what m should be in uppercase slash 802 underscore 3 so point you should not write you need to specify in this case 802 underscore 3 that's it hope you're clear and q uh q whatever it is there first letter q should be in uppercase okay so this is one line is created and then what i'll do is i'll create one more node extra node and then establish a link from uh lan uh in your lan n4 node with what a separate node called as n5 so for that see ns duplex link i'm creating between which node here n4 and n5 the bandwidth next is your time delay and the type of the queue is what drop tail and as i said that whenever there's a congestion window so it's used for which protocol tcp protocol so what i'll do is i'll create a tcp protocol for your n0 node and for the same thing whenever it go with your destination what is that here that is your tcp sync getting or not and the application layer protocol for your uh, TCP is what? FTP. So see here, a new agent. So A should be capital. TCP protocol I've created. Uppercase it should be there. I'm just creating an object called as TCP. And to which node I'm attaching? I'm attaching to your N node. Miss, what does that do in this? The properties of TCP, whatever it is, that has been taken by your N0 node. Hope you're clear. And the application layer protocol for your TCP is what? FTP. So new application FTP you create. And that FTP, whatever it is, that is to be attached to which one? A TCP. For TCP, what I've given is object TCP0. So dollar FTP0, attach agent to which one? Here? TCP0. That is been there. And again, I can specify the packet size and everything through your application layer protocol itself. The application layer protocol is what? FTP0. So dollar FTP0, set packet size 500 I've specified. And the interval time I've specified as 0 0.001. Done. And for the same source, you need to specify the destination. For the destination, the protocol or the agent used is what TCP sync. So new agent I'm creating. So TCP sync, TCP S should be in uppercase. Okay, and I'm creating an object called a sync file, and I'm attaching to which node here? N five node. So I'm attaching to that. So then what I do? I'll connect this and this. Okay, that is what NS connect TCP zero and sync file. That's it. Hope you are done with this. Same way you do for these two uh, nodes. This is your source two and destination two. So say nothing changes to your new agent TCP you create and attach to which one your N2 node. And new application you create and create a different object. Okay, FTP2 I'll create and attach to which one your this TCP2. Okay, set specify the packet size and your interval type. And the same way destination node, whatever it is there, you specify okay, and attach to which one your N3 nodes here n3 node i'm attaching as a destination and connect these two things that is your tcp2 and sync3 that's it 
hope you are clear and here what exactly i need to do is i need to plot the congestion window graph so whenever i want to plot the graph uh, i need to consider from which all the source as the congestion window whatever it is it is specific for your sender window it is specific for which one sender window so what i should do is i need to trace what all the package that has been transmitted from two different sources to your congestion window that's what i need to trace so what i'm doing is i'm opening two files one for your source one and one more for which one you have source two so i'm just opening your trace file two trace file and i'm attaching to which one see i'm attaching that particular file object whatever i created to which one tcp not for this one okay and one more file i'm creating and i'm attaching to which one here tcp2 the second source hope you are clear and what exactly i need to trace is the congestion window of your source one and congestion window of your source two that's why go to that particular thing first uh, 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 which one here source one is which one here the object what they are created is tcp0 so tcp0 trace is a keyword and i'm uh, tracing of all the thing of which one the congestion window of tcp not and the first source node cwnd underscore no space here this indicates congestion window i'm tracing the congestion window of your source one same thing trace the congestion window of your source two that is your tcp2 that's it uh, then after that what happens is your proc is a procedure this is your procedure name finish uh, you all know that okay no arguments is passed empty braces the opening braces should be in the same line and i'll make all my variables what are declared as what global and plus trace you know what does it do it's going to dump your output whatever it is once your simulation has been executed to your normal trace file and your nam file once you do that what is the use of that file close that one by objects of those files and if you want to see the animation by using your execute command what you're executing is your nam you just give file name that's it hope you're clear exit zero successful completion the end of your procedure and next what i'll do is i'll just randomly uh, start my simulation through what whenever i'm just specifying the timings and all i need to specify through what application layer protocol itself so here two sources there so for source one the application protocol is what ftp for that object what i created is ftp0 for source two what is the object i created is ftp2 so simultaneously something like so you can give anything it doesn't there is no mandatory that you need to give the same timing so you can give anything but run parallelly so multiple times that's it okay so at 0.1 you are started okay same thing at 0.2 see ftp2 is started and then ftp0 is started stop at 5 6 second and ftp0 again 7 second you are st starting and again 14 second you are stopping so that like that and ftp2 is started at uh, 0.2 second and end at what 8 second and at uh, 10 second you are starting and 15 second you are stopping so total finish time should be more you all know that what is the use of your at keyword it or it is it is used to specify the execute or whatever time you want okay execute later so for that at keyword is used at what time you want to execute so the time is specified and you can run your simulation by just using your run command hope you are cleared and uh, the detailed expression of all these things has been explained in your previous uh, your videos you can uh, go with that to know the syntax of all those things okay and whenever you are creating your land eight or two underscore here you need to give one space here you need to give one space so this is a standard uh ethernet uh mac layer that's it hope you're clear with this so this is your uh what you can say the program how it executes and i need to plot my graph right so for that what i'm doing is i'm using your x graph i'm using your x graph i am what i'm doing is uh whatever the output i'm getting from two different sources i'm just moving to which one are two trace file so what should i do i need to uh write an aux script Okay, such a way that the auth script has to be passed to those two trace files that is your file1.tr and file2.tr so before that let me compile the program okay so you know how to compile ns file name dot tcl okay so once you do that you get your animation window so here so you can uh, just edit and place the nodes wherever you want as n5 is a separate node so n1 node n2 node entry node and sorry this n4 node so see so this all belongs to one land and this is your separate node that is out of your land so just i'll use play button see i'll just specify the color also so source one destination one labeled also source one destination one here also it will be there okay so as 
I'll zoom out, see source two and destination two. You can see the data transmission is taking place. From zero, it goes to LAN one means it goes to all the nodes. Whichever node is your destination, only it takes that one. Other other nodes, what does it do? It's going to drop the packets. So now, so this is the way how exactly it executes. Hope you're getting with this topology. You can see the data transmission happening. So once it has been done, so I need to plot my graph and you can just see the trace file, right? So G, G edit. Okay, the trace file is 3.tr it is there. So I don't get anything. So here you get, uh, this is the output what you get. But what exactly introduce? I need to plot the congestion window graph. Okay, I need to plot your congestion. See the question, plot congestion window they said. The congestion window, whatever it is there, I just moved to what, two different files. Okay, uh, that is your file one dot here and file two dot here. So get your date. Okay, uh, file one dot tr. okay. So here is the output, whatever the window condition C. So here the trace file of your congestion window is different. Here there is totally six fields. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven fields are there. Totally seven fields are there in your congestion window trace file. Okay. So the trace file for your congestion window in your normal trace file is different. So totally seven fields are there. The sixth field indicates what CWND. So if that is the case, what you'll do is you'll plot this is your time and this is your packet. The packet, what are the values of your congestion window? How many value packets you are transmitted? So this is what I'm just uh, printing in your graph. I'll show. See your sixth field, whatever it is there in your congestion window. It is which one here? It is your type. That is your CWND means it is your congestion window packet. And first field is your time, and the last field is what packet uh, value. That's it. Packet size. So I'm just plotting the graph uh, time versus the packet flow in your congestion window. So I'll just write the script for this. So G edit, I'll just give the file name as three dot awt. Okay, so my trace file is my auth script is very simple. Begin section, no variable declaration. See if dollar six equal to equal to CWND underscore. If that is the case, what I'll do, I'll just print the statement percentage of floating point it is that's why. So dollar one and dollar seven. Dollar one indicates what I said, the time. Dollar seven, what it indicates the value in your congestion window. So this is the trace file for what congestion window trace file for what your congestion window. It is separate. Okay, hope you are clear. So I just passed now, and this auth script has to be passed to which one here? File one dot here and file two dot here. So how do I do that? So awk command minus f option is used. Okay, which one I am passing? The auth script is passed as an input to which one? So the source one has been copied to which one? File one dot tr. And this is your redirectional operator. I'm moving the output to some other file, something like, like I'll just specify A. I just move the result to what A and hope you are clear with this. In the same way, what happens is one more file, awk minus f. Again, the same org script is passed to what the source two. Source two is copied to which one? File two dot tr. And I'm just moving this result to a particular file called as B. You can move to anything. Okay, so I have more. You can just see the result. Only two fields will be there. So a G edit A. Ready? This is your time. This is your packet size, packet flow in the congestion window of source one. In the same way, I can check for what your source two, whatever it is. The source two has been copied to which file? That is your B file. See here. This is your time and this is your packet of your source two, whatever it is. So based on this, I need to plot the graph. Okay, I need to plot the graph. So plotting your graph. So there is an inbuilt tool in your uh, NS2 that is called as X graph. That is called as what? X graph. Okay. And just specify the file name. What is the file name? That is A for source one and B is for source two. So as soon as you click that, so just you can see the graph here. So here A that is of your red and B that is of your green. A means the red whatever it is that is for your source one and B whatever it is there that is for your source two. So this is your uh, time. Versus what the packet, whatever that is been from. So this is how I'm just plotting the congestion window for the specified Ethernet LAN topology. So this is your program, how exactly it works. Hope you're clear with this, guys. Okay, so thank you. So I'll just uh, end my session here. Okay, hope you're clear with this. Thank you for your patience, listening.